Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another session of Power Learn at Home Kit Facebook Live Sessions. For this evening, we will be discussing on a curriculum primer for parents learning English and using our Learn at Home Kit. Without further ado, let me introduce to you our speaker for tonight. Our speaker is a special science teacher for at the Philippine Science High School main campus. He finished his Master of Arts in English Language and Literature teaching at the Ateneo de Manila University. He is currently a board member at Literature Educators Association of the Philippines and one of our notable Vibal authors. He's the author of our books at English for Academic and Professional Purposes in 2016 and 2019 and also the author of our Langlit book for grade 10 this 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you our speaker for tonight, Mr. John Daryl Wiseman. Thank you so much, Ms. Kia. And thank you, Dane, for hosting this event. And hello, hello, everyone. Um, I'm back, and uh, this is Daryl. I'm glad to be here once more. And tonight, we'll be having this uh, special session on a curriculum, or rather, um, on the English curriculum for parents, okay? So for the teachers out there, perhaps you'd already be familiar with what I'm about to discuss. But for the parents, um, I would like to encourage you to listen closely and um, to... You know, for us to learn how to bet, best support our kids 
uh, especially during their homeschooling or rather um, in their distance learning education program, which I know that you've heard on the news that for most of this year, we'll be having um, what they call this um, distance education as the model for our education, especially uh, in the absence of a vaccine, but hopefully we'll have a vaccine soon. Okay, so tonight, okay, I uh, will be talking about curriculum and we'll be talking about uh, the English curriculum in particular and how we can support our kids in exploring this curriculum through the Viba Learn at Home Kids. Okay, so let me share with you uh, my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, there you go. Okay. So I guess I'm getting ahead of the story. This is already my last slide. Okay. Anyway, so let's begin. So the title of tonight's discussion is Curriculum Primer for Parents, Learning English Using Learn at Home Kits. Okay. So before I go to the discussion on curriculum, I'd like to share with you that Learn, that learn at Home Kits of Bibal are available and for free. Okay. You can download them when you visit Bibal's website. So, Learn at Home Kits comprise of a test booklet, activity sheets, a teach at home guide, and learning supplements that will help your kids appreciate the lessons even further. Um, and as uh, mentioned or as uh, the name suggests, these are supplementary materials to help them enrich their learn what they're learning in school. Okay, so these are the Learn at Home Kits. Um, the free trial is good for 10 weeks or but or uh, but rather um so but but if you would like to avail of the entire package then you may contact our marketing team so that uh, they can give you uh, the price for this and you can order uh, the book or the rather the materials good for one year so learn at home project is a free starter kit with learning materials for students so that they can continue their schoolwork and the safety of their own home so like what i've mentioned the Learn at Home kits would, can be used in order to supplement whatever your children are learning in school. So for LGUs, for barangays, or for concerned neighbors, this is a public service from Vival, and you can download and print out the Learn at Home kits and distribute them uh, in your neighborhood in order to help your kids out there. Okay, uh, It's available in print or digital version, and if you'd like to download, you can simply simply click on the link that I provided here, or you can um, visit the website, type it, uh, type the URL on your browser, so that you can get to the Learn at Home Kids website. And there you can download all the materials. Uh, but if you would like again to purchase the material for the entire year, then you may get in touch with our marketing team. Okay, so tonight we'll be talking about four things. Okay, since this is a again this is a curriculum primer for parents. So a lot of the things that I'll be discussing may already be familiar with the teachers, um, especially it, it can, uh, for the English majors, okay? So we'll have four points on our agenda and our goal is for our parents to appreciate what curriculum is, okay? So that there can be a sense of coherence, a rhyme and reason in the way we communicate with our kids, okay? In the way we teach our kids or we support our kids at home, okay? The second agenda, or second in our agenda, would be the concept of communicative competence. Okay, communicative competence is the overarching philosophy or the overarching framework followed by the Department of Education's language curriculum. And so we'll also be talking about this, what it means, and what it means to be competent in English uh, in this day and age. Okay, I'll also talk about um, the MELCs or the MELCs. Okay or the most essential learning competencies. I'll explain to you what this means. And we are going to look at the MELCS document in a little while so that we know the competencies that we need to target when we're training our kids. We're going to end with an exploration of the different learning kits that Vival offers, and we'll try to see their alignment with the MELCS that the DepEd has already published. Okay, I think we're all set. Let's begin. Okay, so let's first begin with the definition of curriculum. Note that there are various definitions of curricula or a curriculum, but I selected this one in particular because um, I think it encapsulates the most important components in a student's learning experience, okay? So this definition is from Skillbeck 1984, 
although it's quite dated, I feel that this is this strongly captures what we'll be talking about tonight. Okay, it defines curriculum as the learning experience or, or as the learning experiences of students, in so far as they are expressed or anticipated in goals and objectives, plans and designs for learning, and the implementation of the plans and designs in school environments. Okay, again. The learning experiences of students in so far as they are expressed or anticipated in goals and objectives, plans and designs for learning, and the implementation of the plans and designs in school environments. Note that I highlighted certain words there that I believe are very important. Okay, The first keyword or keywords rather would be learning experiences. What does this mean? Okay, parents, nowadays... Um, what or the, the philosophy that many schools follow or rather that the department of education follow is what you call the learner-centered or student-centered curriculum. Ano po ba ang kahulugan ng learner-centered experience or learner-centered curriculum? Ang ibig sabihin po nito, yun pong ating mga anak or yung ating mga bata, no? sila po yung ating unang-unang consideration pag po tayo ay nagtuturo o pag ginagabayan po natin sila. Paano po ito na iba nung araw? In the past, a teacher would present the material, give readings, or give problem sets, and the students are expected to reach the standard set by the teacher. So ganun po yung style po natin nung araw, hindi po ba? Meron po tayong standard at bahala na ang mga estudyante kung paano nila aabutin kung ano man yung sinet na standard ng kanilang mga guro. Ngayon naman po sa panahon natin ngayon, baligtad po. No? Hindi na po tayo teacher-centered pero learner-centered. Hindi naman po ibig sabihin i-spoil natin ang ating mga anak or pagbibigyan natin sila sa lahat ng gusto nila kahit mali. Hindi po yun ang ibig sabihin. Ang ibig po sabihin ng learner-centered eh, ang tinitingnan po natin dito yung kakayahan at karanasan ng ating mga anak. No? We are using learner experiences no? as the anchor for of every learning situation or learning experience. Okay? So hindi po ito parang uh, paligsahan na kung saan anak kailangan maabot mo to. Pero ang sisimulan po natin kung ano po yung kakayahan ng ating mga anak no halimbawa ako po no sa case ko po uh, pagdating po sa language no yung aking anak ay well na observe ko po sa kanya habang lumalaki po siya ngayong 5 years old na siya ang naging first language niya po ay English no at yung Filipino ay sumusunod lamang and how did that happen at home we're speaking Filipino no And we're also speaking Bicol because yun po yung uh, lingwahe po ng aking misis no, at ang kanyang family. Pero how come uh, my child became a first language English speaker? Simple lamang po ang sagot dahil po sa Disney. Kanonood ng Disney, no? well, kinakausap namin siya ng Filipino, ng Bicol, no? pero kanonood ng Disney, eh, naging you know, English siya. So ngayon, nung pinapractice ko po sa kanya, No, yun pong mga iba't ibang materials in Filipino I have to start with the basics, no? Kailangan ko pong simulan na sabihin sa kanya anak, ang tawag sa light ay bumbilya, ang tawag sa garlic ay bawang. Kailangan po ganun ang pagtuturo ko kasi doon siya nagsisimula. Hindi ko pwedeng sabihin sa anak ko na anak, eh, 'di ba, Filipino ka, dapat alam mo na 'to, no? So pag sinabing learner-centered Tingnan po natin kung ano yung alam ng bata, no? At this point kaninang umaga, my child and I were studying subtraction, no? Pero dahil yung kanyang abstract thinking hindi pa ganoon ka-develop dahil nga 5 years old, no? Ay gumagamit po ako ng popsicle sticks. Why? Because that is what works for her. Ganun po 'yon. So kung, kung ano po yung nag-work para sa bata, whatever is working for the student, that is those are the kinds of learning experiences that we need to give our kids. Second point here would be goals and objectives. Goals and objectives are the standards no, that the Department of Education has set for our kids. Like for example, at the end of kindergarten, 
your child should be able to introduce himself, introduce herself, tell a basic story, write a three-word uh, sentence, parang ganon. No? So ito po yung mga specific things na dapat nagagawa ng ating mga anak. No? So this, are, this is a checklist and I'll show you later yung tinatawag nating MELCs no? or Most Essential Learning Competencies because these are the things that our kids have to master by the end of the year. Ayan. Pangatlo po, plans and designs for learning. Okay, yung plans and designs, ito po yung ating planned activities. No? In the case of our discussion tonight, ang planned activities po natin are the ones that we can find in the Learn at Home kits. And if you would purchase the full version and the Vival textbooks, so these are the planned and, and uh, designed activities that you can find in the Vival products. Okay? So right now, you, can, you might be seeing uh, the bigger picture now. So there are goals and objectives, and the Vival products are there to help you meet those goals and objectives by first considering where your child is at. Maliwanag po, no? So kung ano po yung, kung nasan po yung anak natin, doon tayo magsisimula, no? Pwede pong advanced, pwedeng huli, pero walang problema po yun, okay? Huwag po nating sabihin, anak, ang bagal mo naman, bakit hindi ka pa marunong magbasa? O anak, uh, bakit hindi ka pa marunong mag-add? Because, you know, each child has his or her own pacing. And we need to be able to determine that when we teach our kids. I'll give you another example. I'm sorry, no? Um, kasi for the past three, four months, I've been teaching my daughter. So most of her, my examples would be my engagement with her. So um, yung anak ko po, no? um, what I noticed was when she was three years old, she can barely speak. No? Hindi siya communicative pa rin. No? And then suddenly at age four, she began talking. And now at age five, her vocabulary is so deep. Sobrang nag-boom siya nung 4 years old, 5 years old. So ngayon po, ang nangyari, no, dahil nag-boom siya ngayon nung tag-5 siya, we are using materials that are, you know, grade 1, grade 2 materials in reading. Bakit po? Eh kasi yun po yung pinanggagalingan ng aking anak. no. Hindi ko naman siya ina-advance dahil gusto ko lang. Pero dahil po, pag masyadong basic yung pinag-aralan niya, mabobore siya. Likewise, nung hindi pa siya nakapagsalita, Basic shapes lang kami. No, ganun lang pinag-aaralan namin, basic shapes. Bakit? Eh kasi po, nung time na yun, yun lang yung kanyang kaya. Yan. So I hope at this point, malino po yung ibig sabihin ng curriculum, goals and objectives, plans and designs. And then lastly, would be the school environment. No? So we have to ask ourselves if we are designing an environment that is conducive for learning for our kids. No? Um, is there a space where our kids can explore can ask questions, no? can study, can experiment. That's very important in implementing the curriculum. So at this point, po, no, if you have any questions about curriculum, the definition, and how to implement it, you can, you can just chat in the comment button and then um, our moderators will be able to look at them later. Okay, that is the definition of curriculum in general. This time, we'll now go to the English curriculum or to the language curriculum per se. Okay? But before that, I'd like to ask you, what is your idea of teaching English to your kids? No? Pag po kayo pinagturo ng English sa inyong mga anak o pag ginayad nyo po ang inyong mga anak sa English, what would be your priority? Correctness or communication? Bakit ko po ito na itanong? Kasi po, ganito yan. Ako po ay tinanganak ng uh, 80s, no? So lumaki po ako at nag-school taong 80s sa 90s. And during that time, the emphasis on language teaching would be on correctness. What do I mean? You have to be able to fill in the blanks correctly, okay? In a grammar exam, okay? You need to be able to identify the correct name of the author or you need to supply the correct line in a poem, okay? So the emphasis when I was growing up was on more on correctness. Although little by little, communicative language teaching is already being introduced at that time. So anong ibig ko pong sabihin? Um, kasi po, sa ating kanalakhan, baka ang ating focus no, sa pagtuturo po ng English is kung kailangan po tama yung sagot ng ating anak sa mga exam lagi. So that would be 
correctness, no? I'll, let me share with you a story, no? One time when I went to a university, to the capital university of another country, I will not just mention which country, no? But it's a top one university of that country and definitely if being a top one university, um, their admission exam would include an English proficiency exam. And of course, that university would only get students who got a high score in that proficiency exam. Now, this is what happened in that university. No, I was surprised because I had to code switch. Ibig sabihin, kailangan kong gamitin yung native language nung bansa na pinuntahan ko. No? And what was the reason? Because the students of that university can use English correctly. Kaya nilang sumagot, no? kaya nilang uh, magsagot ng multiple choice exam sa reading, sa kasaraiting, pero natatakot silang magsulat, natatakot silang magsalita. No? So they were not confident about speaking, they were not con confident about writing, no? because what they were used to is to simply supply the correct word or the correct item or the correct grammatical form in an exam. So in a more traditional sense, no, um, our, the way we were taught English in the past were highly influenced by what we would like to, or by, by what we call as grammar translation method and the behavioristic method, no, which emphasizes correctness. No? Now, came the 1980s, then the, the 1990s, now uh, we had what we call the communicative competence revolution. Now, when we talk about um, language teaching, what we're looking at now is not simply correctness. Of course, correctness is still very, very important because if we're not correct in the way we communicate, then we won't be understood. However, uh, we need to understand that correctness means a lot of things and we'll talk about that later on. So now the focus of English language teaching is not just correctness, but more importantly, communication. Will your child be able to fill out an application form? Can your child request for a material from the laboratory? Can your child negotiate uh, with a vendor, with a seller? Or will your child be able to locate the direction of a place by looking at a map? So now, the focus of language teaching and learning became more functional. Okay? So I hope that you can look at the difference between the two. They are not mutually exclusive. Pwede po silang magsabay. Pero sa tingin ko, mas mahalaga na mat matutunan natin ng ating mga anak na gamitin yung language rather just, than just simply no, being able to give the correct answer. So this is um, the communicative competence framework that DepEd is using. It has a lot of elements which I am not going to go through, uh, which, which I, will, oh, I won't go through in detail. But I'd like to emphasize that what's important here is that our kids will be able to make meaning through language. Okay? What does making meaning through language exactly mean? We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay? I'd like to share with you the guide, uh, the philosophy behind the program, the English program of DepEd, as well as its guiding principles. Okay? Ito, sinishare ko po, nakuha ko po ito sa curriculum guide ng DepEd bago ang lockdown. Okay. Nung nag-lockdown, naglabas sila ng most essential learning competency. So ang ginawa po nila, kung ano yung original na nilabas nila, binawasan lang no, at ang itinira po doon kung ano yung pinakamahalaga. No? And I believe that it is a good move no, to subtract things that are not too important and focus on things that are most essential. No? Sabi nga po natin, may kasabihan tayo na less is more. And later on, I'll explain to you why that's very important. Okay? But first, no, I'd like to go through the different, um, uh, what you call this, the overarching philosophy and the guiding principles of our English curriculum. Okay, number one, okay? <coughs> language is the basis of communication. No? So sa Filipino, sa Tagalog, Ang batayan or ang basihan ng ating pakipag-usap sa isa't isa ay language, no? Ito yung ginagamit natin para makipagtalastasan, no? Makadaupang palad ng bawat isa, no? Pag may gusto tayo, ang ginagamit 
language. Kahit yung bata no at a very young age, daddy milk no or gusto ng uh, anak natin ng uh, laruan or candy that's communication no so that is the communicative function of language no and in a way it's it, or rather in a lot of ways it's very performative because when our children say something no they know that something happens in the world no that people react to their language so yes language is the basis of communication kaya po tayo nakakaintindi is because we share a common language at kaya rin po tayo nakapag-express ng ating sarili is because of language. Number two, and parents, I'd like to highlight this. Parents, okay? Language is the primary instrument of thought. So ganito po yan. Siguro iniisip po natin yung English, isa lang yan subject sa school. no Na, bawa, kagaya ng... Sabi natin, araling panlipunan, practical arts, PE. So in language, isang subject po yan. No? Pero bukod sa pagiging isang subject, tandaan po natin na yung pamamaraan natin ng pag-iisip is comprised of language. Okay? Our thought patterns are formed because of language. So ibig po sabihin, no? Kung magaling ka sa language, if you can use the language efficiently, you can explain science concepts. Maliwanag po, no? Kung alam po natin yung language ng mahusay, kaya mong is-express yung sarili mo sa science at kaya mo rin intindihin yung mga graph na ipinapakita sa atin ng Department of Health tuwing hapon, naiintindihan po natin yung mga announcement no? na ginagawa po ng ating mga opisyalis tuwing sila po ay nagre-report sa atin. No, kasi yung pamamaraan ng ating pag-iisip, ina-express po natin through language. No? Ganun din po, no, we learn more about our history, we learn more about our culture, we learn more about technical stuff, no? we learn how to create something using language, kahit naman sa practical arts or TLE. Di ba, kunyari, kung gagawa ka halimbawa ng cross-stitch, may instructions yun, So, para masunod mo yung instructions, kailangan mahusay ka sa language. Kung hindi, hindi ka makakasunod sa direction. No. Third, philo uh, uh, third, no, language is the foundation of all human relationships, no? Paano mo masasabi na yung isang tao ay iyong friend? No? How do you can you call someone a friend? Because there is that agreement based on the exchange of words that you have, based on the register you use, no? that will qualify you as a friend. Halimbawa, no? if I'm going to talk to my bosses or I'm going to talk to other government officials as uh, a government employee myself, then I'm going to use a formal language. And that will tell them that the relationship I'm establishing with them through my communication is a formal business uh, relationship. Pero syempre, no, I, I'm not going to use the same language when I talk to my wife when i talk to my daughter or when i talk to my friends no so based on the kind of language we use we form relationships and that is why english no or language as a whole is very important some guiding principles no pag tayo po yung nagturo number one, ito po napakahalaga po mga magulang ito all languages are interrelated and interdependent ano pong ibig sabihin niyan no kahit po English ang subject natin, eh, gumamit po tayo ng wika or ng language na matutulungan po yung mga anak natin na matuto ng English. No? Kasi po, nung unang panahon, at ito po, inabutan ko pa po ito, kapag po tayo ay nagsalita ng Tagalog sa ating school, eh, tayo po ay merong multa. No? One peso, no? two pesos, ganyan. No? So nagko-contest po tayo para mihan ng multa at yung minulta yun yung gagamitin sa Christmas party. Ayan. Eh siguro po na-experience nyo rin po yan before, no? Pero new research, no, or recent research in language learning and acquisition would tell us that our L1 or our native tongue, the language that we are more familiar with, can be used as a vehicle for learning a new language. So kung halimbawa yung mga anak ninyo Uh, nagtatagalog, huwag niyong papagalitan, oh, speak in English, speak in English, no? Ang gawin niyo po, no, spontaneously, kausap, mag-usap kayo, you can speak in English, no? Use encouragement, manood po kayo ng materials, movies in English, 
magbasa kayo in English, pero magbasa rin kayo in Filipino or Bicol or Bisaya or whatever language pong ginagamit ninyo. No? Tapos explain nyo po sa inyo mga anak yun pong connection ng English saka ng ibang mga language. No? Sabi natin, o oh, anak, sa Filipino, ganito ang pangusap, pero sa English, ganyan. Para nakikita nila yung connection. No? Meron po ako dating Korean na tinuruan. No? Korean po siya. Uh, nagsimula siya zero English. No? So what I did to help her learn English was to use Korean language as my base. No? Binabalibaligtad ko po kasi yun pong Korean, iba po yung kanyang sentence structure sa English. So binabalibaligtad ko at pinakita ko sa kanyang relationship ng dalawa. At uh, salamat naman sa Diyos, ano, later on, eh, naging translator pa siya no? from Korean to English. No? So ganun po, no? So wag nating maliitin yung value ng first language sa pagtuturo ng English. Okay. Next, language acquisition and learning is an active process that begins at birth and continues throughout life. And even now, I'm learning new languages and I'm also learning uh, English pa rin. No? I'm still learning English, I'm still learning Filipino, I'm still learning a lot. I'm also learning Bicol and so so on and so forth, no? So we never stop to learn. Next, language requires meaning. The way we use language you know, will have something to do with the effect you know, that, that it has in the world. You know? So we need to be able to uh, distinguish the different effects of using language. You know? For example, parang sa trabaho, isipin nyo po, you know, minsan ang pag ang employee may maling ginawa kunyari sa company niya. You know? Normally, ano pong ang gagawin ng boss pag may ginawang mali employee? Ita terminate yung employee. So, ang gagawin ng boss, normally, magsusulat siya ng termination letter. Yan. Pero, may ibang companies, they're more compassionate to their employees. So, ang sasabihin nila sa employees, we will not write a te uh, termination letter, but we would like to encourage you to write a resignation letter. No? Bakit po? Kasi kapag ka termination at may record siya ng termination pag nakita ng ibang company sasabihin ay no siguro may ginawang mali itong employee na to. Pag resignation mas neutral. So ano pong ano po sinasabi natin dito the way we use language, the way we use terminology and technicalities have a um, meaning and impact in the real world. Number four, Learners learn about language and how to use it effectively to their engagement with and study of texts. When we say texts, this is any language production. No? Kahit ano pong bagay that uses language. May it be a brochure, may it be a cartoon, an essay, short story, no? kahit film, visual, that's kasali po yun, no? So if we can teach our kids on how to make meaning out of this text, no? eh hindi po sila maloloko ng fake news. No? At hindi rin po sila maloloko ng mga nag i po no? sa mga iba't iba nating social networking site at pati yung mga bangko. No? Naalala ko dati, no? share ko lang. No? Uh, if you know your language well, hindi tayo maloloko. Meron nagpadala po sa aking email. No? Pinapa-confirm, pinapa-verify ang aking account. No? At ang pangalan po ng bangko, at, at medyo na-notice ko na alam ko fake siya. Bakit? Kasi po ang pangalan ng bangko, Bank of the Philippine Island. Sabi ko ba't ganun? Walang S. Parang mali ata yung grammar. Eh kasi ang BPI is Bank of the Philippine Islands. Pero nag-email sa akin, Bank of the Philippine Islands. So sabi ko, ah, scam to, hindi ko ito pubuksan. Pero kung hindi po na alam ng mga anak natin yan, eh siguro, eh naloko na po sila nung scammer no at nahak na po ang kanilang account. Ayan. So napakahalaga po no na ma-process natin ang lahat ng klase ng text, may it be literary or non-literary. Next, successful language learning involves five linguistic macro skills. Ano po 'yon? No? Viewing, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Mamaya ipapakita po natin na itong limang ito ito po yung pinakamahalagang dapat natin i-focus dito po sa MELTS o sa minimum uh, or most essential learning competencies. Last, language learning involves recognizing, etc. Not, uh, that there's a range of language and that there are standard and non-standard forms. No? Ano po ibig sabihin yan? Halimbawa, English na lang. 
of course, our kids are learning English at school and normally sinasabi natin, eto tama, eto mali. No? Ngayon po, let's change our um, paradigm a little bit. No? Pwede po kasi nating sabihin na yung English niya iba at yung English nung isa iba rin. No? Alimbawa, no, tayo mga Pilipino, meron po tayong English terms na tayo lang nakakaintindi, parang CR, comfort room. Hindi natin kailangan sabihin na mali yun, pero sabihin natin na sa experience ng Pilipino, ganito yan, kaya comfort room yun na sabi. Uh, yung pong African-Americans, they also have their own form of English, no? which they use in their community, but it may not necessarily be the kind of English that they use in the academe no? or when they write research. Okay. Sana po, no? uh, ito po yung ating mga guiding principles. Kung may tanong po tayo, again, feel free to chat no? through the comment box. Okay? A little bit about our kids din po. No? Uh, remember that our kids are Gen Z. No? Most of them are Gen Z, so they are Gen Z learners, which means that they spend most of their time on the internet if they have access to the internet. No? And a lot of them, No, would also um, have existential questions sa sarili nila. Ano ba meaning ng buhay? Ano ba purpose? No? Ano ba dapat ginagawa ko? No? At uh, sila rin po, very tech savvy sila. No? Mas marami po silang alam sa technology kesa sa atin. So ano pong ibig po sabihin yan? Given that information, dapat yun po yung gagamitin, natin, gagamitin po nating springboard pag in-engage natin yung ating mga anak. No, kasi ganito po ang kanilang characteristics. Okay. So ngayon po, pupunta naman tayo sa most essential learning competencies. Paano po ito? Ano pong kanalaman nito sa communicative competence, no? Ganito lang po 'yan, no? Um, syempre, ang alam po natin kung ano po yung dating meron ng DepEd binawasan. Now, the reason why it is called most essential or why they are called most essential learning competencies because it is what these are the competencies that DepEd believe are most important and they can already go through life even if we discard the other competencies no i'll give you an example no in my case um close reading to me is very important and like what i always tell my students sabi ko sa kanila okay fine you can forget everything else i taught in class except close reading. Bakit? Because if you're able to do close reading, you can engage news articles well and you would know the bias of the author. If you know close reading, you'll be able to make meaning out of different kinds of texts. If you know close reading, then you can better appreciate literature. So isang skill lang siya, pero yung skill na yun, pwede mo siyang gamitin sa maraming bagay. So yun po ang ibig sabihin ng essential. Kahit yung skill na yun lang yung matutunan ng ating mga anak dahil pwede na siyang magamit sa ibang bagay, no? Eh magsusurvive na po sila. And eventually makakapasa na rin po sila sa magandang university pagdating po nila ng college, no? So, pero po kasi mga iba na non-essential halimbawa, no? Kunyari, dati pinapa-memorize sa atin yung pangalan ng mga author eh siguro hindi na natin kailangang gawin yan kasi pwede nang i-google. O kaya dapat dati kabisado natin yung mga pangalan na figures of speech na siguro dapat alam lang natin kung paano siya gamitin pero yung mismong mga pangalan niya na pagkarami-rami, yung iba doon pwede na natin kalimutan kasi hindi, baka hindi naman nila magamit pag sila po ay nagtrabaho. So yun pong ibig sabihin ng MELCs or MELCs. No? At later on, i-discuss natin kung paano po ito maglilink sa ating learning kits. So at this point, I will stop sharing my PowerPoint and at this time, I'll be sharing with you the MELCs of DepEd. No, ito po yung kanilang nasa listahan. I'll give an example and I'll show you how this ties in with our learning kits. Alimbawa, ito po yung tinitingnan ko. No? Sa grade 1, ang sabi po nila, ang sabi ng DepEd, um, It, yung ang essential po one of the things that are essential to them is this no for the kids to be able to listen to short stories and poems no and after listening or siguro kung advance yung ating mga anak reading no 
um, they need to be able to note important details pertaining to character setting events. No? So kahit anong kwento yan, kahit ugly duckling yan, or uh, gold deluxe, no? or kung ano pang kwento yung uh, alam ng bata, no? or mas maganda nga ang alamat ni Maria Makiling, so on so forth, no? eh, basta alam nilang i-identify yung character setting at event sa isang kwento, kahit anong kwento pa ang ibigay mong bago dun sa bata, kaya niya pa rin ma-identify yung character setting at event. O, number two, give correct sequence of three events. No? So, halimbawa, no, alam ba nung bata kung ano yung beginning ng story? No? Ano ba yung initial condition ng mga character? Tapos, bakit nasira yung initial condition? Pangatlo, paano na-resolve yung initial condition? So, pag kaya raw gawin nyo ng bata, resolve na sila pagdating sa storytelling. Pangatlo, can they infer the feelings and traits of the characters? Can they also identify cause and effect? Kaya ko ito ginawa ni Kulas, eh kasi nagalit siya. Yan. So ito po, ito pong MELKS ng DepEd, yung minimum, um, uh, most essential learning competencies po natin, ito yung magiging basis natin when we use RVBAL learning kits. So for example, no, uh, meron akong grade 1 pupil kunyari. Okay? So, merong story po yung ating Vibal Learning Kit. A Tiny Seed. Ayan. The Story of Wangari Maatay. No? So, ito pong A Tiny Seed na to Napakagandang kwento. No? It will inspire our kids to do more for their society. No? So, halimbawa, no? kayo po, um, magulang, saka anak, you can read this together. Ako po, sa anak ko, ang ginagawa ko, siya na pinapabasa ko sa lahat. Pero pag may maling pronunciation or pag mayro siyang word na hindi maintindihan, doon na lang ako pumapasok. No? Pero basically, yung anak ko na lang pinapabasa ko. And then after that, ito yung tinatanong ko sa kanya. No, anak, tatanungin ko siya after namin magbasa ng kwento. So, who are the characters in the story? Who's the protagonist? Sino yung bida? Pero yung yung protagonist na term dahil mahirap pa sa kanya and I know this is not accurate pero you know, um, loosely translated sinasabi ko na lang good guy pero hindi naman good guy talaga yung <laughs> protagonist all of the time so sabi ko anak ko is the good guy who's the bad guy so if my child can identify as the good guy and the bad guy in the story then namit na natin tong standard to on character anak where did the story happen? So if you read the story, for example, uh, where, where did it happen? You know, in the village on the slopes of Ma, uh, of Mount ano ito, of Mount Kenya in East Africa, a little girl worked in the fields with her mother. Ah, so it happened in Africa. So if you're able to ask that question to your child and that your child answers successfully, then your child is able to are able to identify setting. Okay. So yun, no? And then, you can go through each of these, um, what they call this, learning competencies and try to see if your child is able to meet them. No? So yung mga magulang, pag binasa po natin itong supplementary material, no? kung marunong na magbasa yung inyong anak, then let your child read, mag-correct na lang po kayo. Kung hindi pa naman marunong magbasa, okay lang yun, no? Eh, sabi nga ni Noel Kabangon, panapanahon. No? So may panahon din po yung inyong mga anak na matututo din sila. No? So pagka ganun, kayo po magbasa and then itanong nyo yung mga yung mga to. No? Anyway, ang, competen ang competency naman sa grade 1 ay listen. Hindi pa naman po read. No? Siguro para sa ibang grade 1, mahirap pa yung read. So listen muna. So kayo po muna magbasa. Pwede rin naman po yun. Tapos, after nyo magbasa, tanongin nyo isa-isa. Pwede rin naman, uh, tuwing masa, mababasa nyo yung answer, eh, itanongin nyo na agad bago pa makalimutan ng anak ninyo. No? Para at least nabubuo sa mind niya yung kwento. Okay? Habang tumatagal. So that's, this is one good selection for, to, to train your kids in reading. Pwede rin namang speaking. How? You let your child read aloud. No? Or later on, you can talk about the reaction. No? 
your child's reaction to the story or if your child says ah when i grow up i'd like to be like uh, i want to be like one gari so that is also speaking listening pwede rin no and in fact ito nga po yung kanyang main goal for grade 1 no so kung mapapansin po natin no one text you can do a lot of things a lot of activities already yeah let's look at some other materials okay uh here okay for intermediate naman no what i saw that one of the competencies that deaf ed i would like kids to master is to write a diary so our viva learning kit also features a diary entry no now the one written here in the notebook can be your sample text. No? Kung gusto po natin turuan yung anak natin ng iba't ibang text type, alimbawa ito diary, yung verbal learning material po natin merong sample. Sa simula, ang suggestion ko, uh, gamitin nyo lang po yung pattern na nasa material. Pero later on, tanggalin nyo na po yung pattern tapos hayaan yung anak nyo na mag-explore magsulat on his or her own para makita po natin kung na-master na niya yung art of writing. Ayan, no? And then, before this, no, before the sample, there's a, there are a, we, we can find an explanatory note. No? As you grow up, you will cross paths with amazing people, etc., etc. No? All of these are worth remembering and the best way to immortalize them is through writing. Having diary helps in retracing your journey. So, pwede po itong gamitin for writing. No? And then, kung, kung sinisipag pa po ang inyong anak. No? Actually, yan, meron pang steps dito. No? Meron pang steps on how to write a diary entry. No? Pwede niyo pong sundan ng grammar point. No? In this case, yung grammar point natin ay modal. So, dito po, ito na yung opportunity natin na i-correct yung kanilang errors. By the way, sa language po, may dalawa tayong klase ng errors. May tinatawag tayong global error at may tinatawag tayong local error. Pag sinabing glo global error, it means that the text may not have a clear main idea. Okay? The communication is ambiguous. Pag local error naman, mga mini grammatical errors. Which, which, but you know, the, the text as a whole can still be understood. So when you encounter local errors in your child's writing, then maybe this is a good time for you to uh, inject the lesson on grammar. Okay po, no? Siguro po, I'll wrap up siguro in a few minutes, no? Like in five minutes, I'll wrap up so that we can still have more, we can still have time for Q&A, no? So that Ms. Kia and Ms. Dane can also report the questions. Sige po. Okay. Uh, other materials, okay? Uh, ito po, expository writing. I think this is important, no? Let just let me just give you a, br a brief ano lang din, no? info na that, that I encountered, no? One of the weaknesses of our students in terms of reading is expository reading, no? And expository writing. Sometimes they find it difficult to identify the main idea of a text, no? Ang strength nila is more on narrative but not on expository. When we say expository, ang ibig po sabihin niyan, you are explaining a concept an idea no at uh, factual po yung dating ng ating uh, writing such as in magazine articles textbooks encyclopedia manual examples po ito na expository text no so pwede po rin po nating i-train yung ating mga anak dito no and then link it again with grammar no so yes we still teach grammar but we teach grammar to help them write so uh, let me just clarify again, no, what are the five skills that we want our kids to master? No, Reading, writing, speaking, listening, viewing. So pag may mga activity po tayo dito, ilink lang din natin lagi dun sa five skills. No, What else? Um, even po yung ating mga, tawag dito, yung ating mga reading, ayan po. Sa high school naman, kung high school na yung ating mga anak, Sa bagay, minsan pag high school, ayaw na nila magpatulong. Ano. Pero kung nais po natin silang tulungan, no, ang reading po kasi nila is more of ano, analytical reading. So Vibal Materials will also have um, sample essays on how to analyze naman literature. 
Okay? On how to analyze literature. So, yun po, no? Same with our activity sheets, no? Meron po dito letter writing, which is again, no? A good skill to learn. Kasama po sa competencies yung sentence writing natin sa elementary, no? Ayan. Conducting an interview, speaking, no? Which is again part of the competencies when our kids know how to conduct an interview, then they can, they, they don't, um, they cannot just, um, what they call this, conduct a formal interview, but they can also engage in informal conversations, no? Get to know new friends, etc. And perhaps you can inject a little bit on FB etiquette, no? Or on social media etiquette on how to establish those conversations, no? Ayan po. So at this point, I guess I don't have much time. So basta ganun lang po, no? We are we can look at the MELCs, no? And dito na po yung mga dapat ma-master ng ating mga anak. And then we can use the materials here in Vival para ma-master po nila yung mga MELCs. Kung nahihirapan po tayo dahil sobrang dami po nito, no? Then we focus on the five macro skills. Reading, writing, listening, speaking, viewing. And if they can effectively use it in the real world, no, by doing real life tasks, then we've done our a good job as parents. Ayan po, uh, Miss uh, Miss Kia. At this point, siguro will be let's entertain questions. Sige po, ma'am. Meron po ba tayong mga questions from our uh, viewers? Apa? Yes, po, sir. Good evening, po, let's ating viewers and to Sir Daryl as well. Ayan po, we have here one question, sir, from Mr. William Moore Dorian. Is there communication if the words or terms used are incorrect but still the conversation is going on? Yes, yes. No, As long as there's no communication breakdown, when we say communication breakdown, if um, the two interlocutors or the two, sorry, two parties no, um, conversing, will not be able to understand each other, then that's where communication breakdown happens. Pero still, there can be communication kahit mangyari yun. Why? Because there's what we call in uh, applied linguistics as repair strategies. Like for example, demo, me, Tarzan, you, Jane, yun, nagtuturuan kayong ganyan, no? Or you're motioning your watch, no? For that time. Or you're motioning to the, or, or you're looking, or you're pointing to the sky to talk about the weather. So those are also communication strategies because Communication is not only verbal. It can also be non-verbal. So yes, no? everything is communication. Or to put it simply, everything communicates. Yeah. Okay, po, sir. Thank you very much, po. Next question, po, sir, from Mr. Algen Makaspak. Hello, sir. May I ask what is your opinion or stand regarding the MTLB MLE in the K-12 curriculum? in regards to the effectiveness of delivering new learning? Okay. <laughs> My uh, response uh, will be personal. It's not institutional, meaning it, is, it does not reflect the views of Vibal or Philippine Science or DepEd. Okay, this, this is just my personal take. MTB, MLE, shows a lot of promise. It has a lot of potential because the idea behind it is that you are going to use your student's L1 or your student's mother tongue as a bridge toward second language, as a bridge toward other subject areas, which is very good, no? Because we best express ourselves using our own language. However, in terms of implementation, I guess uh, there's, uh, you know, there's still a lot of room for improvement, no? In terms of materials production, in terms of teacher training, we still need work on that, no? Like, why? For example, Bicol, no? Uh, because uh, my wife's family is from Catanduanes, so the kind of Bicol I learned is, you know, the, the one they use in Catanduanes. And apparently, it's not actually the same thing as the one used in Sorsogon. So there are certain nuances, and that is where communication breakdown happens. Another article I've read uh, a few years back, I guess this was in 2013, 2014, at uh, the dawn of the implementation of MTBM MLE in Ilocos, Ilocano is used as the language. However, there are certain varieties of Ilocano. And even, for example, in Baguio, there are four um, dominant mother tongues, not to mention the tribal languages used by the people there. So somehow, because of that, ano kasi, it, it kind of defeats the purpose. So we need to look into the implementation and like, you know, 
um, tweak the nuances. No, um, there's also a study conducted by my students, Ren, high school students in Pangasinan. I will not mention their names for privacy, but you know, ang galing ng study nila. They interviewed the teachers, uh, the public school teachers in Pangasinan, um, and asked them about you know the advantages and challenges of you know using MTBMLE. And among it, among them, that was um, the, some of the things that they mentioned that did improvement would be materials development for textbooks, teacher training, and also um, they need to have like a solid orthography, no, so that they know where their students are coming from. So again, learner centered tayo. So yon again, MTBMLE is promising, pero there are some areas that we need to work on. So that we can maximize the benefits of this program. Yung Summer Institute of Linguistics, they have studies no, showing the benefits of MTBMLE. Pero yun nga, dahil masyadong malaki yung diversity yan. So yun. <laughs> okay po sir, then for our last question for tonight, this is from Mr. John <clears throat> Russell Alvarez. Ayan okay. po. Good evening po sir, how can we guide our students? in proper reading, especially for those who don't have proper training during primary level? Okay. Uh, that's really a challenge. Okay. Um, how to guide students in reading? That's very challenging because I admit that I've encountered high school students also who struggle. Well, the rule of thumb, and this will take a lot of effort on your part. I know I understand, no? is to begin where, where they're at. If it means giving them simpler texts and giving them a different text muna, eh, ganun talaga, mag -e effort tayo. Nung uh, dati, meron akong students na hirap din sa reading. So what I did was to um, get, I think I was teaching Shakespeare at that time. There's um, a website called um, paraphrase.com. I am not sure if that's the right name of the website wherein you can uh, copy and paste a difficult text and it will automatically downgrade the language for you. And that's how you can you know, help your students understand the text. No, um, I understand some are even having problems with phonetic transcription. If that's where your students are at, then th that's your starting point. But then again, I know that it's difficult if you're teaching a large class. So this is where remediation will come in. It would be good if you can get in touch with NGOs, you know, with non-government organizations who are offering free tutorial for kids. There's a lot, there are a lot of faith-based and non-government organizations whose project is um, you know, giving reading instruction. No? Like naalala ko dating Gawad Kalinga, they also have that program for struggling readers. So kailangan talaga ng partnership because after all, we are teachers. no? We would like to be superheroes, but of course, we also have our own limits. So yeah, partnership then to remediate will help. Yeah. Okay po. Sir, okay lang po ba maghabol pa po tayo ng last two questions? Sure, from, go ahead po. Okay po. Game lang. Thank you po, sir. <laughs> from Sir Joe Batanes. Ayan po. What strategy can you recommend to senior high students who are not fond of reading and have low reading comprehension? Thank you, Paul. Uh, that's very, again, that's a, a very challenging. Uh, begin where they're at. Um, it will depend on what subject you're teaching. If you're teaching 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world, and let's say you are tasked to teach a Haruki Murakami short story, Eh, di magsimula tayo sa anime, yung spirited away na anime, ang, gan ang ganda niya, no? yung style ng pagkakagawa niya, Murakami, pero pang bata. No? So, pwedeng ganon. You can use visual texts no? uh, just to make that correspondence no? para at least ma-appreciate nila. But then again, kailangan talaga bumalik pa rin. We have to go back to close reading all the time. And that might require tutorial and uh, after school remediation. I know one public school teacher who teaches after work for free just to help the student um, catch up with the rest of the class. Yes, um, it's sacrifice. So yes, um, you have to go back to identifying the main idea, identifying the basic parts of the plot diagram, because unless your student is able to do that, then no matter what you teach, that's futile. No? Of course, in more um, exclusive schools, they offer after-school programs which are paid. 
Pero siyempre, kung mahirap yung students natin, hindi kawang gawa yun from our end. Or yun nga, like nabanggit ko kanina, maybe you can ask the help of ano rin, NGOs. No? Yun. Or pwede rin ano, NSTP ng mga college students. Diba? May ganun silang NSTP. Pero I think applicable yan pag wala ng lockdown, pag tapos na yung quarantine. Yan. Hmm. Okay po, sir. And then for our last question, from Miss Esperanza Angeles. Much as we want to focus on communication, accuracy in grammar is still the main focus of most written assessments in English. What can you advise us, English teachers, on this matter? Okay. Um, sige. Kasi um, I've been involved with a lot of... Of course, I cannot give the details, but I've been involved in a lot of test writing efforts on the national level. And I would say that the focus is really on communication, even if it's multiple choice. Um, but maybe in siguro long tests, periodical tests, I don't know how um, the division um, administers exams. Well, of course, we cannot tell our superintendents to change the test. So we still have to abide by that. But here's the thing. If our students know the spirit of the grammar rule, or if the students know how to efficiently use it, they'll be able to answer those tests. No? Pa rin, no? Again, so let me repeat that. If our students are good in communication, if they can um if they are if they have mastery of the grammar rules, then it would be easier for them to respond to let's say closed tests or um, gap fill exams. No, that has been my experience, and I hope that. Uh, it's also going to work for the others. But of course, we can still go back to the traditional you know, way of teaching as well, if as needed, because we're not discounting or we are not downplaying the importance of grammar translation method and other traditional uh, teaching strategies. No? Yon. Hello po, Ms. Kia? Ms. Dane, hello. Ayan po. Okay. Uh, is it now time to, for me to say goodbye or are there more questions? Miss Kia, sige po. Ayan. Okay. So anyway, ayan. Siguro po, uh, ako na lang muna ang mag-goodbye. No? So again, thank you so much for um, attending today's uh, session. i just like to share my PowerPoint one more time, uh, this, the, the first part in particular. Okay, so if you want to download or avail of the free materials of Vibal, you can always visit the, what do you call this? The link that I indicated here, https um, www.vibalgroup.com, learn at home, and you can find there the link to the free module. So I hope that everyone is safe. Um, I hope that this has been a fruitful session for all of us. And let's all keep on learning. Let's all keep on helping our students and our children become the best that they can be. So, yun po, maraming salamat and good evening to all.